8.22. Three coloring is MP complete. Proof. It is easy to see why the problem is in MP. Given G and K1 certificate that the answer is yes is simply a K coloring, one can verify in polynomial time that at the most K colors are used and that no pair of nodes joined by an age receive the same color. Like the other problems in this section, three coloring is a problem that is hard to relate at a superficial level to other MP complete problems we've seen. So once again, we are going to reach all the way back to three set. Given arbitrary instance of a three set with variables x1, x2, x3 until xn, and it closes c1, c2, c3 until ck, we will solve it using a black box for 3D coloring. The beginning of the reduction is quite intuitive. Perhaps the main power of 3D coloring for encoding Boolean expressions lies in the fact that we can associate graph nodes with particular terms, and by joining them with edges, we ensure that they get different colors. This can be used to set one true and uh, the other false. So with this in mind, we defined nodes vi and vi bar corresponding to each variable xi and its negation xi bar. We also defined three special nodes t, f, and b, which we refer to as true, false, and base. To begin with, we join each pair of nodes vi, va bar to each other by an edge, and we join both these nodes to base. This forms a triangle on vi, va bar, and base for each i. We also join true, false, and base into a triangle. The simple graph G we have defined thus far is pictured in figure 8.11 and it already has some useful properties. In any three coloring of G, the nodes VI and VI bar must get different colors and both must be different from base. In any three coloring of G, the nodes true, false, and the base must get all three colors in some permutation. Thus, we can refer to the three colors as uh, the true color, the false color, and uh, the base color, based on which of uh, these three nodes gets which color. In particular, this means that for each i, one of the i of the bar gets the true color, and the other gets the false color. For the remainder of the construction, we will consider the variable xi to be set to 1 in the given instance of the reset, if and only if the node vi gets assigned the true color. So, in summary, we now have a graph G in which any three coloring implicitly determines a truth assignment for the variables in the reset instance. We now need to grow G so that only satisfying assignments can be extended to three colorings of the full graph. How should we do this? As in other three set reductions, let's consider a clause like x1 union x2 bar union x3. In the language of three coloring of G, it says, at least one of the nodes V1, V2 bar, or V3 should get the true color. So what we need is a little subgraph that we can plug into G so that any three coloring that extends into this subgraph must have uh, the property of, of signing the true color to at least one of uh, V1, V2 bar or V3. It takes some experimentation to find such a subgraph, but one that works is depicted in figure 8.12. This uh, six-node subgraph 
attaches this to the rest of G at five existing nodes. True, false, and uh, those corresponding to the three terms in a clause that we are trying to represent, in this case, V1, V2 bar, and V3. Now suppose that in some three coloring of G, all three of V1, V2 bar, and V3 are assigned the fourth color. Then the lowest two shaded nodes in the subgraph must receive the base color. The three shaded colors, uh, shaded nodes above them must receive respectively the false, base, and true colors. And hence, there is no color that can be assigned to the topmost shaded node. In other words, a three coloring in which none of V1, V2 bar, or V3 is assigned, the true color cannot be extended to a three coloring of this subgraph. Finally, and conversely, some hand checking of cases shows that as long as one of V1, V2 bar, or V3 is assigned the true color, the full subgraph can be three colored. So from this, we can complete the construction. We start with the graph G defined above, and for each clause in the three set instance, we attach a six node subgraph as shown in figure 8.12. Uh, let's call the resulting graph G prime. We now claim that the given three set instance is satisfiable, even only if G prime has a three coloring. First, suppose that there is a satisfying assignment for the three set instance. We define a coloring of G prime by first coloring base true and false arbitrarily with the three colors. Then, for each i, assigning vi the true color if xi is equal to 1, and the false color if xi is equal to 0. We then assign vi bar the only available color. Finally, as argued above, it is now possible to extend this three coloring into each six node close subgraph, resulting in a three coloring of O of G prime. Conversely, Suppose G prime has a three coloring. In this coloring, each node V i is assigned either the true color or the false color. We set the variable X i correspondingly. Now we claim that in each clause of the three set instance, at least one of the terms in the clause has the truth value one. For if not, then all three of the corresponding nodes has the false color in the three coloring of G prime and as we have seen above there is no three coloring of the corresponding clause subgraph consistent with this a contradiction when k is greater than three it is very easy to reduce the three coloring problem to k coloring essentially all we do is to take an instance of three coloring represented by a graph G add k minus three new nodes and join these new nodes to each other and to every node in G. The resulting graph is k colorable, if and only if uh, the original graph G is three colorable. Thus, k coloring for any k greater than three is NP-complete as well. Coda, the resolution of the four color conjecture to conclude uh, this section, we should finish off the story of the four-color conjecture for maps in the plane as well. After more than a hundred years, the conjecture was finally proved by a Apel and Haken in 1976. The structure of the proof was a simple induction on the number of regions, but the induction step involved nearly 2,000 fairly complicated cases, and uh, the verification of these cases had to be carried out by a computer. This was another satisfying outcome for most mathematicians, hoping for a proof that would yield some insight into why the result was true. They instead got a case 
an analysis of an enormous uh, complexity, whose proof could not be checked by hand. The problem of finding a reasonably short, human-readable proof still remains open.